All right, we are back here for some more Major League Pickleball. This is the Challenger level event, and we're about to get underway with the AZ Drive versus the Dallas Pickleball Club. That means Sarah Burr, Sarah Ansbury, Wes Burrows, and Andrea Silstrom are going to be taking on Krista Gecheva, Megan Fudge, Chuck Taylor, and Brandon French. As is tradition, ladies first. Sarah Burr and Sarah Ansbury. They are warming up on the right-hand side of the court. The lefty close to us. Australian maid, Sarah Burr. I'm gonna wish her luck just because, you know. Uh, she's teaming up with the veteran, Sarah Ansbury. Ansbury has been around the game almost nine years now. And, uh, well, she's done it all, really. Her reputation speaks for itself. And I think she's got a really good uh, team leadership role for the AZ Drive. Megan Fudge and Krista Gacheva. A couple of relative newcomers to the game. How do you feel about the chances here, Brandon? Yeah, you're right. We've got a couple of newcomers, one on each team that'll be playing in this matchup. And then you've got a uh, legacy person in Sarah Ansbury, who has notably a ton of medals in this pro pickleball game. Um, women usually start started off here in MLP, and I think you know, it's kind of a common theme all day. They've got to bring the energy and the momentum uh, to really will their team to a victory in this match. So I'll be interested to watch this one closely and kind of analyze what's happening here. Yeah, very much so. I think uh, I've watched a fair amount of footage from Krista Gecheva and super fast on the court, great skills, quality, good clean contact. And uh, you know, just moves really well. I think Megan Fudge brings a lot to the table. Um, I'm curious who's going to be keen to dink cross court with Sarah Ansbury. She's such a such a good quality, consistent player. She's built a, a career on consistency, resets, being able to stay patient in cross court dink rallies. Um, hasn't always counterpunched as much as I think a lot of other players, but I think in recent times she's kind of realized that the game has really taken on a much more aggressive complexion and her game has, uh, has followed suit. So I'll be very impressed to see her really counterpunching well. Sarah Burr, yeah. the young Australian, she's come over, she's embraced professional pickleball. Loves to just grip it and rip it, you know. Yeah, and that's, uh, hey, it's it's a good strategy when it works. If there's times to dial it back, I look for the experience of somebody like Ansbury to really be the sounding board mm -hmm. for this team uh, to lead the way in what kind of strategy they should have. And, you know, one other thing to mention is you know, Ansbury's been around this game for in pro pickleball for a while. A lot of these players watched her coming up, right? They watched her training videos. They saw her winning tournaments. And so you, you'll see some remnants of Sarah Ansbury's game and how these ladies play mm. and on top of that you'll see their own style uh, and their own imprint on this as well so I'm looking forward to this matchup all around we've got a great guys matchup to follow this one with Brandon French Chuck Taylor against West Burroughs and Andre Seelstrom so this entire match is going to be fun um, both teams are I, I believe this is their last match uh, of the day in yeah. group play and so they're really looking to make a statement yeah everyone's trying to get through group play uh, it's still hard to tell exactly who's going to be able to make it through to the quarters and semis. Um, get Jeva, you see her warming up the serve. Plenty of good top spin there. Yeah, she's got the, uh, it looks like the Carbon 1 paddle, um, possibly the 1X. And you've got Megan Fudge playing with Gamma, Sarah Ansbury playing with Gamma as well. And we've got an Engage paddle over there from Sarah Burr. So Sarah 2.0 on the other side. <laughs> Yeah, Ansbury, the one thing she hasn't done with her game is adopt the two-handed backhand that you see so many other players doing. She has got a, a fantastic slice, single-handed backhand. Uh, her lean-in volley dinks are legendary. Um, but patient discipline has been the name of the game for her. And I think Kacheva and Fudge may, uh, may indeed try to bully their way through this match. Yeah, one advantage for DC Pickleball Club is they've got probably one of the best minds in all of pickleball as their coach uh, and Dave Fleming on the sideline. So 
you know, look for him to kind of shift strategies as needed, guide this team hopefully to a victory on their end. Yeah, that's uh, Dallas Pickleball Club. I'm looking forward to seeing Andreas Silstrom though. Uh, I've watched him a couple of times. Six foot nine, you will not miss him on the court. He is an absolute presence, former ATP professional tennis player, uh, as well as his partner Wes Burrows, both former tennis professionals. Yeah, looking forward to watching him live. He had some great success uh, last uh, last couple weekends in APP tournaments playing with Joey Farias. Mm. And a couple highlights if you've seen them on social media as well. So he is not to be taken lightly. I know there were a few people that were surprised uh, when he was taken in, in, in MLP because they haven't seen him or weren't familiar with his game. Um, hopefully from what you've seen in the last two <laughs> weeks is yes. there's a reason why this guy is here playing and I expect him to kind of show that and continue to improve uh, this weekend here. Yeah, no, he's phenomenal, fantastic hands. Um, and for the size he is, soft touch. That's it's kind of amazing, really. I've seen him sort of gently meander towards the kitchen line and be able to cool off balls, uh, similar to Matt Wright, really, often just diving the paddle underneath the ball, caressing it, and getting the job done up at the kitchen with quick hands and amazing, amazing power. So we're underway. Great backhand by Fudge. Yeah, already serious power. Sarah Burr trying her luck down the line. Let's see if she continues the trend. Yeah, nice put away from Ansbury. Yeah, anything high through the middle um, is gonna be what Sarah Ansbury's looking for. She'll be able to put those balls away routinely. And Burr using the net well. A little aggression rewarded there on the on the drive. We're still in the filling out process in this matchup. Oh, that's oh. an awesome return. Yeah, beautiful chip and charge. Chip and charge, I like that. Chip and charge. 2-2 two -two is the score. Wow. Rock solid from Mansbury, just getting behind Fudge. That was a heavy backhand from Getsteva, so it was a good job by Burr to be able to block that, and Ansbury finished the deal. Oh, <laughs> she's mishit it perfectly enough. It certainly came out high, but uh, not enough shtick to actually go out. So 4-2, Burr and Ansbury. Wow. It appeared to be a very low lob that was rewarded. Yeah, Ansbury got away with a high third. Ketchava just couldn't connect. Yeah. Good leave on that one. Smart yeah. lead by Getcheva right there. Yeah, very very hasty, I think, from Burr. I'd love to see her set up the points a little bit, possibly dink down the lines if they can't get uh, Fudge to dink cross court with Ansbury. Oh, beautiful take from Ansbury. Yeah, it's a good ball. She snuck over there, didn't she? Yeah, she's almost playing like a mixed double setup where she's going to look for any opportunity on that side and take advantage of it. Great dig by Ansbury. Mm. Wow. Okay, so good defense from Burr. Kept him alive in the point, and Ansbury picked her moment to precision. 
Yeah, I think Fudge had a chance to put that ball away. She elected to go a little bit conservative, and it actually paid off for Arizona Drive. Yeah, that will cost her. That's the first missed drive, though, the Burr has had. So 5-7. What oh. a ball! Wow! Watch this from Getcheva as she sets it up. That She's is a pro move here. Wow! Had Ansbury leaning to her right. Uh, she's already noticed how much of the middle Ansbury's looking to take, and Getcheva will keep her honest. Yeah, all it takes is one, you know, getting beat on the backside one time for the other player to respect it which is why it's so important to do. Oh, that's a good ball. Yeah, that is a great ball. She's yeah. got great length with that, uh, well, obviously her forehand. I feel like we haven't seen a single match so far that didn't have a left-hander on the court. Yeah, I agree. They're starting to become that's amazing. more prevalent yeah. in pro pickleball. Yeah, I mean, we, we saw what kind of advantage that Rafa Nadal held in tennis playing left-handed, even though he was a, a natural right-hander. Uncle Tony said, we're better off you being left-handed. Um, I'm sure that was fun for childhood. I yeah. love that setup by Getcheva. She had a great backhand, and then not only did she dink that cross court, but she put side spin on it. Mm, made it very awkward contact for Burr. Again. Couple of miss hits. And Burr gets it down with a, a tricky single-handed backhand. Yeah, that was a good ball. And I think that's where Getchva could get in trouble with that side spin slice. Uh, she's got to make sure she keeps that ball down. So 9-9, nine, nine, no one uh, really putting a stamp on this one just yet. And Fudge is pleased with that inside-out cross-court forehand. So 10-9 to the Dallas Pickleball Club. And a good last second leave, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a good. Hey, hey that's uh, you know, 30, 40 percent of the game is letting out balls go. Bird did a great job there. And Ansbury feeling like she had a better shot at it. Yeah, a little over leverage there. Um, we are at 11-10. Dallas Pickleball Club is up by one. We're headed to the changeover. Neither team has really grabbed a hold of this game yet. Um, I, I'd like to see Megan Fudge take control from the Dallas Pickleball Club side. I think she is trying to fill this game out, playing a little conservative, and while the game is tight, mm. she's going to need to take control if they want to try to separate here from Arizona Drive. Yeah, I'll be very curious if the AZ Drive team are going to try to target her on the return of serve to keep her back one extra ball. Uh, but both Getcheva and... Fudge doing a great job of moving the ball around well, and uh, I think early on they they really made a point of making sure that Sarah Ansbury wasn't going to be able to crowd the middle quite as much as she wanted. Um, early on, we saw Ansbury reaching in, taking a couple of balls, and doing real damage with it. And since then, the Dallas Football Club, <laughs> Dallas Football Club, <laughs> Dallas Pickleball Club, have uh, have fed enough to the backhand side to make sure she's not uh, going to be crowding middle. Listen, man, my Dallas Cowboys are out of the playoffs, so I really don't appreciate you bringing them up, but hey, <laughs> it happens. Yeah, no worries. We're one of my favorite ice hockey teams, those Dallas people. Very good. Yeah. We've got some great teams. Just jokes. <laughs> yeah. I like their name more than most of the NFL teams. Dallas Cowboys, it's got a good ring to it. It does.
Wow. Just a little too soft from Getcheva there. Uh, I, you know, I don't think there's any threat if that ball's a little bit higher because Fudge has really quick hands, I mean, fast hands. So hmm. she's got to make sure that ball's over. Nice work from Ansbury. Disconnecting a little early, allowing Burr to take that first one. Oh, just missed. It is quite a flat kind of slapping forehand from Burr. Yeah, second time that she's gone wide uh, on that forehand ball. Interestingly enough, she actually puts a fair amount of topspin on the return of serve, and yet the third shot drive seems to be quite flat, typically the other way around. Uh, it's, a, it's a big mm. serve by yep. Ansbury that forced the deep return by Fudge. So two points the margin. Great entry by Burr. Mm. Go, go. Oh, just missed. I think there was an opportunity for Burr to go down the line. Fudge looked like she was cheating over to the center quite early. Yeah, I agree. I don't know if she just got tentative at the end or because Fudge was in the area, she got a little bit nervous on it. But that's those are chances, to your point, Morgan, that she's got to take. Yeah, you, you kind of always have to prove to your heads up opponent that they need to fear you and they need to stay close enough to their sideline to protect their backhand, uh, what is typically the backhand anyway. And uh, Ansbury calls it long. Fudge asking the referees. Both said they saw that just a little bit long. Okay. Well, sometimes my eyes deceive me. Hey, listen, we're on the sidelines here. Oh, what a serve by Burr. She took the pace off of it, yeah. and added some spin, and that ball just died. I think that might be the first ace we've seen today. Fudge wants a timeout to talk things over. Another Australian just acing people out there. Oh, that's great. Makes you feel pretty good, doesn't right? it? Right? Yeah, it's in the genes somewhere. I don't know. I think, uh, we, you know, we talked about it on the changeover. You know, Fudge just missed uh, a volley a little bit long a few seconds ago. And I think for her, she's got to go aggressive in this matchup. Um, if you're going to miss those balls long, wide, be imposing. Uh, they're not going to they're not going to do well here if she's going to be conservative alongside yeah. Getchela. For sure. I mean, especially that that first volley, the fourth ball. You know, that's not a different mindset to the normal scoring. What is different is the amount of pace that people are trying to put on third shot drives. That's a, a slight difference in terms of the mindset going all in on so many third shot drives. You know, the risk of just losing a point straight away is very real. But you're right, those kinds of volleys need to come with some serious stick. Yeah, and that one right there from Fudge had a little bit more pace. Now, mm. Getcheva really started it, but hey, that's the aggression they're going to need to play with here. Ansbury. Oh, and <laughs> she's getting excited. Look at that, fantastic work. Just clean living there from Sarah Ansbury. Good defense from Burr. That's a great ball there yeah. by Fudge. Just, she, yeah. She's the product of a high ball there and uses the angle with that overhead slice. And the net's not loving them, unfortunately. So 19-15, just two points away here. They will, of course, freeze when they get to 20 and will have to win the point on serve. And they'll get to that point now. Uh, a routine return error from Fudge. Yeah, I'd like to see a timeout here by Dallas Pickleball Club, but looks like they're not electing to take one. 
Huh. Oh, fantastic pickup. Wow. Oh, and one of the first two-handed backhands I've seen for Mansbury. It looks like she's been in the lab. I think uh, Dallas Pickleball Club got away with one by not having a timeout, but mm. see if they can string together a couple here. And handcuffed Krista Gecheva. That was a great placement there by Ansbury. So, for game one, Sarah Burr serving to Krista Gacheva. Wow, that ball just stayed in. Yep. Has she got it? Oh, just a little bit long from Burr. She's asking and the official to confirm. Well, no, actually asking a teammate, Wes Burrows. Uh, you can do that, and they can help you decide whether or not to choose to challenge the call. Uh, I think it's a fun rule. Oh, it's a good play by Getcheva. She hasn't really attempted to go behind Ansbury since, you know, the first half of this game. Yeah, she did it once in the first section with a really crafty dink. But since then, hasn't happened much. Yeah, just too many high balls, and the ball now on the paddle of the young Australian, Sarah Burr, for the win. Oh, wow, what a ball by Getcheva. <laughs> some serious authority on that two-handed backhand. If there's a spot maybe not to hit to her, it'd be right here, as you see on your screen. She just cracks that ball down the middle. I think that's still in. What a wow. point. Fantastic. Arizona drive. Scrappy defense, I'll call it that. <laughs> I think uh, everybody thought that ball would be out initially, yeah. and it just curves in. Burr tried to reset, wasn't yeah. able to. Will that be the moment it all changes? Oh, just overreached as she was drifting to her left. Yeah, I think she was deciding between a backhand mm. flick and a slice and just mm. got caught in the middle. 18-20 is the score. Both sides frozen, having to win the point on serve only. Placement over power once again for Ansbury, just precision work. Yeah, and that's the strategy that Arizona Drive is looking for. String them out wide, get a middle ball, let Ansbury finish. And she has it. That's a big moment. Well played, ladies. So, AZ Drive take game one. Burr and Ansbury over Gacheva and Fudge. Nice work, ladies. So, the gentlemen will take the court. They will see them starting to warm up. Wes Burrows and Andreas Seelstrom versus Chuck Taylor and Brandon French. This one, ooh, it's a real you pick him for me. I've seen Taylor play some unbelievable pickleball in the last year or so. He's one of those players who has been a veteran. Uh, I think I remember him coming on the tour about seven, eight years ago, and he was great. We always knew he had real potential. Um, but he was one of those players, similar to Rob Cassidy was talking about earlier on, that during COVID, he took his game to a whole new level. Um, the area he lives in up in Utah, he now has a lot of fantastic players around him and the kind of training he's got, the kind of repetitions he's able to, to have on a weekly basis has made such a difference. Yeah, I agree. Um, you know, there's a lot of players that they say are overrated, right, or underrated. I think for Chuck Taylor, he's just rated. Like, he is as good as you think he is. Um, this guy has been steady. He has really good results in pro tournaments. Um, so, I, you know, I expect to see him playing well here. 
And, you know, his partner in crime on the other side of the net, Brandon French, is no stranger to playing well also. He's got a gold medal with Riley Newman. He's got some, you know, pretty good exhibition games at the, at the highest level. And, oh, by the way, from the mental perspective, he's one of the best trash talkers in the game. Mm -hmm. And that matters. <laughs> Well, good. I'll be curious to uh, to hear some of his best work out there today, if we get to see it. The X Factor for me is going to be the big man, Andreas Silström, uh, the Swede, the professional tennis player, played on the Davis Cup for Sweden. Uh, six foot nine, the reach for days. If anyone can lob this man, I think they should get a check. 41 years old though, so he is the elder on the court. Not in pickleball years though, he's still new to the game. Picked it up in 2021. And uh, in recent times, he's really started to make a name for himself. You'd be absolutely shocked to see the hand speed of this gentleman. And yeah, he's, he's partnered up with Wes Burroughs. Yeah, with Wes Burroughs. And, you know, you mentioned it. He's one of, you know, the wave of t former tennis players, um, even current tennis players, pro tennis players, that are coming over to pickleball and trying to make a name for themselves. You know, they feel like they can be one of the best in the game. Yeah. No, look, I mean, if you think about just how difficult it is to make it to a, a level of tennis whereby you're making money, a lot of people don't realize the in professional tennis, it's really only the top 70, 75 uh, men that are actually making a living playing the game. Uh, about 20, 25 females. That's not a lot given the grand scheme of things and just how many professional players there are. In pickleball, that number is rapidly expanding and they're having so much fun doing it. So, you know, it uh, really speaks to just how and why so many players are thinking about coming into this game, and I think in five years' time, well, it's going to have a very different complexion. Yeah, I, you know, one of, for me, one of the comparisons that I have with professional pickleball, a lot of people talk about professional golf. Uh, one of the things I say is, is NASCAR. You look at the amount of sponsorships and opportunities that you're able to get at NASCAR, that's really what makes up for the financial perspective for those drivers. Sure, they're gonna drive in tournaments and try to win prize money, um, but a lot of it is about branding themselves and making money there. Uh, it's similar here in pro pickleball where there's so much piece of the pie mm. that all these players can be successful in clinics and lessons and branding yeah. um, exactly. aside from being the top player. For sure. The opportunities are just growing by the day and we now have an opportunity for AZ Drive to extend their lead if they can take down Chuck Taylor and Brandon French. So it's French serving to Seelstrom followed by a forehand drive that sounds a little long. One thing I saw last week from Brandon French was a very sneaky uh, attack off the bounce on the forehand side. So I'd like to see, well, I'm happy to see him on the right side and Wes Burroughs is going to have to be very careful about anything on the forehand side of French. Yeah, French can play the angles like no other, so I'm looking forward. You saw one there as he went wide with the ball. Oh, look at that dipping ball from Seelstrom. Oh, smooth hands from French. Yeah, all these players have really good hands. You see here as Silstrom decides to attack a decent spot for Brandon French, but he backs up and easily blocks it in the corner. Great dig by oh. French. Oh, West Burroughs with a smart side-winding ball through the middle. Very cool, calm, and collected as as he always is, really. It's very hard to rattle Wes Burrows. He often used to play alongside uh, the big man. Who am I thinking? Oh, I'm drawing a blank here. We saw him early on. There's that forehand attack.
Uh, steals from just tags. Chuck Taylor. Yeah, Jeff Warnick is who I was talking <laughs> to. I was trying to. That's a great ball to by Silstrom right there. Is his speed ups and dinks have the same swing motion. So it really helps mm. for the deception. Steelstrom, he put his paddle out there. Burrows had a good look at it. How are the wings, mate? You enjoying those wings? These wings are awesome. Uh, you got to get out here live <laughs> to taste them. Wow. That yeah. was great defense by French to keep him in that position. But Silstrom, man, the link that he has at the kitchen line, seeing it up close is insane. Yeah, I think if you're French and Taylor, you've got to be thinking about how you can just use precise dinks against Sealstrom and move him around enough, hope he pulls that first trigger. That was a sneaky ball there from Wes Burrows. I haven't seen him change his grip that dramatically. That was a great ball. To your point, they're going to have to move Sealstrom around. If they allow him to just stand there and dictate, they could be in trouble here. Yeah, Burrows has very precise drives. I think they should look to really target Sealstrom when he's in that transition zone. That is kind of one of the, if not the last, skill set that comes into a budding professional player. It's a very tricky shot to play. Uh, that's a great low speed up by mm. Sealstrom there, but you're right, as you see French there not happy with the result. They've got to attack Silstrom in the transition area, make him take as many steps as possible before he gets to the kitchen line. Burrows, uh, that's one of the one of the rare drive misses you're going to see from him. So 5-7 is the score. And he's followed up that with a return error. So far we've seen a quiet Brandon French. Uh, be interested to see if they string together a couple. If he starts chirping a little bit. Mm. Well, we had three loose errors in a, in a row from the AZ drive. And then one from French gives them the ball back. So 7-8, a quick change of events. And Burrows feeding beautifully off that from Sealstrom. Yeah, great play as you see he comes here to intercept that third ball. Great job of staying down. Two missed drives. I really shouldn't have said how wonderful his drives were, right? Yeah, those matter here. I think, you know, I don't want him to move completely away from it, but he's got to give it a three or four more inches. Yeah, they are using the Franklin ball. It doesn't travel quite as fast as the Jura 40. Good leave, good eyes, good communication. So 11-8, the AZ drive, take the switch. Yeah, what do you think, Dallas Pickleball Club down three here, what do you think's happening in their uh, team huddle? Well, yeah, I think they're gonna want to slow things down. Uh, that's obviously easier said than done. I think for them, their best chance of success is turning it into more deliberate dink exchanges and methodical approach. Uh, I believe returning to Wes Burrows right now. Sealstrom is not exactly disconnecting early and trying to get in and intercept that next ball. Burrows has made a handful of mistakes on his drive. So if they can deal with his drive when it goes over, get enough pace on it, then at least we keep him back an extra one and force them into a dink rally where you move Sealstrom around the court and uh, see if we can't pick on him in the dink realm. But that's just me, you know.
This is nice, but it was the wrong player. Yeah, opposite side as uh, Taylor just misses that dink wide. They started out with your strategy, right? They returned to West Burroughs, yeah. but got into the dink rally cross court yeah. on the wrong side. And look, and obviously trying to get the ball to bounce in front of Andreas Sielström is not easy. French standing very tall there. Yeah, one of the best ways to block a ball is stay as still as possible, but uh, in this one, he kind of took that one overboard, right? <laughs> yes. Yes, that was AJ Kohler levels of still. Some great resets by oh. Burrow. Wow. Chuck Taylor hit us some beautiful shots, but Burrow, wow. he, <laughs> he got himself out of trouble there. 14-8 now. I'd like to see some energy from the Dallas Pickleball Club bench right now. Yeah, couldn't hurt. You know, energy can win a match. And uh, a team event like this, uh, nothing exemplifies that very principle better than MLP. Well, that ball just wide. Just wide from French, not much. Yeah, and also when you hit a lull against a team, one of the ways to figure out how to beat them, I think, for Dallas Pickleball Club is your point earlier, they've got to dink the ball around unattackable over and over and slowly find some openings. Right now, I think they're rushing just a little bit. And it's playing into AZ Drive's hands. Mm. Yeah, the thing about pickleball is when you get out there, you often realize you've got really only got two choices. You either play to your strengths or you play to your opponent's weaknesses. Very rarely do those two things actually uh, coincide with each other. And the Dallas Pickleball Club are trying to play to their strengths, but it's not exactly playing to the weaknesses of the AZ drive. Yeah, they're um, all wide and... I think AZ Drive this entire game has not felt any pressure. Uh, so if, yeah, if Dallas loose. Pickleball Club can at least put a little pressure here with the two three-point run, I'd be interested to see how Arizona Drive reacts. Oh, that is a beautiful drive from uh, Chuck Taylor. Wow. Yeah, it was indeed going out, but Taylor, once again, couldn't get out of the way. Yeah, I like that setup from there where they switch. They got Brandon French mm -hmm. on the left side and Chuck Taylor on the right side. Hey, look, if it's not working, find a different strategy. They don't switch on this one, though. Yeah, that's just too good. And Morgan, we mentioned this before, as you see Burroughs really attack the net off of this drive, that when you change your strategy, you've got to give some time to let it breathe. Yeah. You can find out if it's the strategy at fault or the execution of the strategy. That's uh, a wonderful attack from French. Very unique. Really kind of flips the paddle round, gives it a, a pancake approach. So they're still alive, 12-18, and that helps. Yeah, it's one thing you can't do if you're Arizona Drive right now is give them any free points. Great drop by Taylor. Oh, that's, what a great Ernie. Yeah, that's, uh, that's great work from Taylor. Just one dink to Burroughs before he redirected over to Silstrom and then applied the pressure with the Ernie. French closing very well. Burroughs unable to handle that shot. Yeah, it's great defense by French. You talk about survival versus taking your opportunity. He survived as long as he could and then was really opportunistic towards the end. This is more like it. What a ball by Seelstrom. Wow. Okay, well, I didn't know he could do that. Wow. <laughs> I mean, that ball looked like it was going a little bit wide. He curves mm. it back in, playing with a carbon two paddle. Yeah, so now just two points away from clinching game two, and the big man gets involved. Isn't it, isn't it funny how one great point just ignites a yeah. player? 
and then one step to his left, and, wow. he, and he's covered <laughs> covered the court. He was almost in the stands. <laughs> And it was floating long, but Taylor, once again, he's been caught three times in this game, and that does give the game to AZ Drive. So they are now just one game away from clinching the victory. We'll find out fairly shortly who the initial mixed doubles pairings will be. So, guys, we will take a quick break from the microphones. You are more than welcome to stick around. Uh, we'll be back, yeah, I'd say it's a minute or two at most before the uh, action begins. Morgan Evans here alongside Brandon Insekpong. We'll be back. Don't go away. So it'll be Wes Burrows and Sarah Ansbury taking the court and the first and possibly only mixed match if they do win this one. They're taking on Chuck Taylor and Megan Fudge. Fudge yeah. serving first. Dallas Pickleball Club, they, they've got to show up in this game right here. If not, they are going home on the day losing this match. Yeah, it's all or nothing. Yeah, good disciplined attacks 
There was one that came off Ansbury that looked like it may have given the opportunity for Dallas to take up position at the kitchen, but it was not to be. Um, Fudge, beneficiary of the net there. I, I, I like the start from both teams. I'm seeing some bounce, some you know, pep in the step for Dallas Pickleball Club, and Arizona Driver starting out on fire. Great dig by Fudge. Uh, good movement sliding to the left from Burroughs to open up space on the forehand side. I'm intrigued with this technique change he's uh, implemented on his backhand side. I, I'm seeing him switch his grip over to eastern backhand and really punch almost uh, the same kind of pancake grip you see from uh, some of the more creative players. Great ball by Chuck Taylor as he put a lot of pace on that. Ansbury tried to block it, it just sailed wide. Oh, oh, he would love to get that one back. You can't really ask for more out of a backhand. I mean, that might be one of his favorite shots all time. Mm. Backhand cross court, uh, just missed it. That's going to cost you whether you're using side out scoring or, or rally scoring. There's uh, not much we can do for that one. So 5-2, off to a good start again. The AZ drive. Yeah. I, I don't like that speed up there no. by Ansbury. It's, there was no one home in the middle. Yeah, that's, that's very ambitious. Oh, and a lob serve. Wow. <laughs> Followed by a drive that catches the net. Well, great dreams setup. do come true there, great. folks. A great setup by Chuck Taylor. <laughs> if you ask him, he'll say that's how he drew it up. Perfect. Oh, what oh. a great Ernie by Ansbury. Yeah. I mean, it, it came out quite delicate in the end, but I mean, it was perfectly placed. Watch that. As soon as Chuck Taylor turns his head, she comes with the backhand Ernie, finishes the point. Yeah. No, she, I mean, she really is the epitome of, as I said it before, precision over power. It's, uh, it's the kind of style that you would want to teach to a lot of players out there, as opposed to, well, just fly through the air. Just do what Tyler Loom does. It's tough to teach that. It's a great Ernie there by Chuck Taylor. He loves jumping that left side corner and then pushing that backhand cross court as you see it here. And it's just tough to get back. Referee's just having a quick chat. Yeah, your point about Ansbury playing a really foundational and sound game. Uh, you know, a lot of players can get carried away as they get into pickleball. They want to hit the cool, the flashy shots that they're seeing. Uh, but really starting out the way that Ansbury plays, which is foundational, and then layering shots mm. on top of that, it's probably one of the best ways to get into pro pickleball. Yeah, start from the ground up. Well, once again, the net is favoring the Dallas Pickleball Club. Yeah, Fudge and Taylor are content with staying back there and just throwing out firefights. And it's working right now. Oh, a little late to the party. Yeah, maybe a half second late there. I think uh, it's good aggression by him, but got to choose those shots wisely. Nice. Again, just 75% down to the feet of Megan Fudge, and Ansbury gets the job done. Great power from Fudge. Looks like she's, she's determined to up the ante a little more in this mixed match than she was in the women's. I, I'm, seeing, I'm seeing some extra power from her. 
Ooh, and Chuck Taylor. You know, I noticed this uh, in one of the early tournaments of actually last year when he was playing a, a PPA event. Um, and, oh. Wow. He has been punished by the pickleball gods for spinning the ball <laughs> out of his hand. Uh, <laughs> He didn't realize he was doing it. I, I talked to him after, yeah, it was early on when the PPA had deciding, decided no pre-spin whatsoever. And he was kind of unaware that he was doing it. And I'm sure that was the case there. Yeah, it's that's, it's uh, in his head, though. I mean, that's an interesting exchange there. As you see, Arizona Drive up 11-7 on the changeover. But to see Chuck Taylor called for spin on his serve, uh, especially a serve that he's been using for quite some time now, and then directly afterwards mm. serve it, what, at least two to three feet out, which yeah. he hasn't done all day. No. Uh, it's tough to say that that's not partially in his head there. Yeah, that's a mental a mental break there, and uh, it trickled on to the next point as well. Um, you know, for me, if, it, if at all something has bothered you, whether it be something from the sideline or a weird call or some shenanigans, doesn't matter what it is. You call yourself a timeout. Just regather yourself and uh, don't let one mistake be compounded by two or three others, which is what's happened there. And it's given the AZ Drive a four-point advantage. Yeah, and I uh, completely agree. And, you know, there's times where your teammates have to save you from yourself. Mm. And that's where they can call the timeout, seeing that there's a couple errors. Uh, they, they benefited from the change over here. So let's see what they talked about and if it's effective. Ansbury got away with that one. It's uh, they, they look like a, a ball relatively low to her forehand, something of typically just see her reset, move up to the kitchen line methodically. But she's playing very aggressively, and I think Wes Burrows is feeding off it beautifully. Yeah, that's a good call, and how timely is that, uh, Morgan, <laughs> as he comes in and <laughs> intercepts that ball. And you're right, one of the things you see at the pro level is even when a bad shot works, they usually know not to do that again. Yes, yeah, for sure. You give yourself that feedback. You don't have to lose the point to know that, yeah, that was risky. Chuck Taylor, another Ernie, but he's missed it. Yeah, and if I didn't know any better, I'd say they're almost baiting him to hit that ball. Mm. It's the second time he's missed one. Yeah, I mean, you talked about it before, the kind of energy right now on the side of the Dallas Pickleball Club. It's just... Uh, they need to believe they can win this one, you know, and it's uh, it's so often the case. They will wait till this point's finished. Oh, that's a great ball by yeah. Ansbury. Yeah. Cross court. What, what was that? a shot by He's Weston <laughs> Burrows. <laughs> the sneaky wow. rungan. Uh, he drifted around the backhand side, found a way to flip the forehand through the middle. And that's the first and only time we've seen him do that today. Therefore, unpredictable. How comfortable do you have to be to be able to hit that shot in an MLP match? Yeah, it's like pulling yourself out of a 360 ice storm slide and having a sip of coffee at the same time. Yeah, and you mentioned energy. While uh, Arizona Drive are up by eight, I'd like to see their team go crazy on a shot like that. Yeah. It's a methodical point by Dallas Pickleball Club as they make their way from the baseline all the way up to the net and force the air. Let's see if that momentum carries on. That's trickled on nicely to that beautiful forehand drive from Chuck Taylor. Yeah, I often say it, the, uh, the script of the match usually follows the internal monologue of the losing team. And you've got to change that monologue. You've got to be the one that believes that you can just get one point here and there, get close, get close enough to apply some pressure, and then you never know. How 
Has Chuck overplayed? No, he's safe. Yeah, got himself back in position there. Hansberry threatened to Ernie, and then Burroughs took a chance. He did. Well below the net, and uh, I think they need to stop the bleeding. Yeah, I mean, we talked about not having really a budget here in rally scoring, mm. and while they're still up five, I'd like to see a timeout if they don't get this point. Well, there's certainly wow. a change in energy on cue, too. I mean, they must be listening. Yeah, what'd you say about the internal monologue of the yeah, losing they're, uh, team at the they're moment? They're changing it. They're trying to make a happy ending. Great dig by Fudge. Wow. And Burrows. Uh, he's missed it. It was certainly there for him. Yeah, again, that's over what? Is that a five-point run so far by yeah. Dallas Pickleball Club? Yeah, six. One more. There's got to be a timeout. Oh, Chuck Taylor almost got caught. I think they need to settle down, start playing some disciplined pickleball. Burroughs had a stretch of four or five just amazing plays, beautiful shots, uh, and he took that momentum into shots that didn't need it, that just needed to be played, moved around, lived to fight another day. Yeah. And, you know, hopefully you saw that there at home, but mm. Burroughs just waved to his bench saying, we're good, we don't need a timeout. We talked no. about your teammates saving you from yourself. Yeah. This is one of those moments where they've got to call timeout for their squad. Yeah, all the momentum is with, was with Dallas Pickleball Club. Still is, I think. Uh, but that is a point for AZ Drive. Easy to forget that. They are 17-15 now. Great block by Fudge to be there. Yeah, she's really getting some good reads on Wes Burrows, understanding when he's about to swoop in, and he's going to the same kind of locations time and again. So one point the margin. Oh, a little Talk about communication it. there. Burroughs bails himself out of trouble, but it was not pretty. Yeah, it ends in a smile, but very closely <laughs> could have ended the other way. It could have been a frown. Yeah. Come on. All right, 18-16. Great defense by Ansbury. Overhead by Fudge. Another overhead by Taylor, and no one's home. Yeah, they were both separating, anticipating a wider overhead. And we could have got a Sherman tank through the middle there. Dallas Pickleball Club has a chance to steal this game. Yeah, it certainly, if they do, it would certainly be clutching victory from the jaws of defeat. Great drive by Taylor. Now, let's see if Burroughs can keep his cool. Well, he didn't need to. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> I think he just threw off Fudge a little bit by taking that ball mm. when it was in the same area as Ansbury. Mm. Oh, great reset by Burroughs. And then he charged the kitchen line, applying just enough pressure to Chuck Taylor. And that has given them game and match point. Let's see if they can squeak this one out. Oh, this is looking good. It's a great drop by Ansbury to set it up, and Burroughs cleans it up with a 60-70% drive. He had so many ups and downs in that game. He was a human roller coaster ride, but uh, I think the stability that Sarah Ansbury added to the team helped really kind of 
weather the storm there because that was a fantastic comeback from the Dallas Pickleball Club. But it is the AZ Drive taking this match, marching forward, improving their chances to move on from the group stages. Brandon, this is it for you and me, bud, until tomorrow at least. Wow, yeah, um, they don't get the pleasure of hearing us the rest of the day, but tomorrow <laughs> we will be back for some more pickleball, and MLP has been killing it today. What a great first day. Yeah, wonderful facility, fantastic play. Tomorrow morning, uh, Dominic Catalano and Chad Ed Edwards, I believe, will be kicking off proceedings at 8 a.m. Myself and the lovely Brandon Insipong will pick it up at 12. We hoped to uh, to hear, well, we don't hear from you, but you know, it's nice when we hear from you afterwards, when, when you send nice text messages and nice emails, as opposed to, well, you pronounced this one wrong. <laughs> I can't get everything right, no one can. Even the players sometimes don't, so. We love you, and we'll be back tomorrow, guys. That's it from me, Morgan Evans, alongside Brandon Insekpong. Take care, and, uh, well, you can always head over to Championship Court. That's uh, the Talking Stick Resort Championship Court. Uh, I think they've still got some action going on there, so check it out, and we will talk to you tomorrow. See you soon.